up everybody we are back with another two dollar deck tech for 2dh a format we created to have a new meta for commander and to make the game more accessible to new players and players on a budget this is my fun deck uh, i built it just to go big and do timmy things uh, it's roshin meander and she is just gonna accelerate your mana really quickly um, ideally you're going to have uh, 9 mana on turn 4 or 5 to do something fun with. I've got lots of uh, mana doublers, a group hug in the deck, lots of big stompies uh, that get bigger as the game goes on and I have more mana. Uh, ways to give haste and some other tricks and uh, plenty of burn spells as you would expect with a general who can only pay X. Uh, there's kind of a shoe in card for Roshin, and that's Mage Rite Stone. Uh, for one mana, you can untap her and then create four more mana. So she ends up being seven uh, when you have this in play. And you can do a lot of fun things with it, like give everyone lands. There's kind of a group hug sub theme in the deck with the mana doubling and giving away creatures and things like that. Uh, and we're also just trying to go crazy in this deck. Uh, the deck is sort of weak to Counterspell and Wrath and um, some things that you would expect from a green deck, but if they don't have it, they're going to get it because you are copying uh, what you're casting, and a lot of times that is just a fireball that's going to win you the game and deal tons of damage to people uh, and creatures. Howl of the Horde was uh, just a gift from Wizards when they printed this. Uh, this is exactly the kind of effect that this deck loves. Uh, a lot of time I'm going to have 20 or 30 mana to play with, so uh, putting three in to copy something thing. It's not a hefty price to pay. Uh, for mana doublers, we've got Zerta Ancient, uh, Overabundance, which has some nice synergy because it punishes my opponents for tapping lands, Mana Flare, and Dictative Karametra. This card's sweet because you can flash it in on the end step so that you get the benefit first. Um, a lot of times you think giving your opponents mana is a bad thing, um, but what I've found is the most fun thing to do with my decks is push them very hard in one direction and just the hell with the rest of whatever is going on. So, uh, I mean, if you're building a control deck, you want to have a lot of utility and flexibility. When you're building a Timmy deck like this, you just want to get there. You just want to uh, go big or go home. So I've got lots of ramp spells here, uh, kind of what you'd expect. I don't run a lot of mana dorks that tap for mana because that makes my deck even weaker to wrath effects. So what I'm trying to do is just get more lands than my opponents. So all of these spells just get me lands. <clears throat> Here's the big daddy right here. Just all the lands. Uh, so if I have mana being doubled and I have more lands than everyone, I'm getting more advantage. Pretty basic. Um, and I like Temple of the False God in this deck. Not all decks, but it's less of a liability when you're ramping so much. Uh, I'm going to run out of cards eventually, so some sweet card draw in green. Uh, especially for this deck when I've got these big creatures, Hunter's Insight and Hunter's Prowess. This can also just be a finisher. Um, I've drawn as many as 20 cards off of one of these effects before, uh, and then you just keep what you need, get rid of what you don't, get to the late game. Uh, Reforge the Soul, Harmonize, pretty typical. Uh, Outpost Siege is a really sweet card in this deck. Uh, every once in a while you'll name uh, Dragons if you have a whole bunch of creatures in play and like you know, Goblin Bombardment to sack them. This can just kind of stack that effect, but normally you're just wanting the card draw. I love that Wizards is giving Red some more uh, impulsive card draw. I think that's a step in the right direction. Uh, Life's Legacy is not a card that you always want to run in, in the green deck, but uh, you'll find with this deck that a lot of times you just have an extra 5-5 five five laying around um, and just sacking it to get a bunch of cards that turn is, is better than having the body. And Humble Defector, just one more cute little way to help people out. Uh, never give this to the blue player. You always give this to the uh, non-control uh, deck and try to make them a threat as well. So you can see we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of mana. Um, and then the goal is to have a really high threat density after that. I want most of my cards to be able to end the game so that when I'm given the opportunity to do it, I can do it. Uh, Apocalypse Hydra, pretty sweet, and when you've got 20 mana, it's not uh, too steep to remove a bunch of counters to ping people. This is the ultimate blue anti-blue card for this deck. Uh, this card is just every blue player's worst nightmare. I've been on the receiving end of this, um, and again, when I've got uh, 9 mana on turn 4 or 5, I'm just coming at you and clocking you. You better find some non-blue creatures and chump blockers and things to put in play, or a wrath effect. Um, Hooded Hydra is a great card uh, to survive a wrath effect. Um, it's kind of a, a medium card otherwise, but uh, I like it in the deck. I have a little bit of a token sub-theme I'll show you later. Genesis Hydra, just 
a value card. I mean, you get two for one. You can put a, uh, any permanent into play. It doesn't have to be a creature. Uh, granted, I'm running a lot of X spells uh, in this deck, but you're going to see a pile of, of value creatures coming after this. Uh, Lifeblood Hydra from Commander. This card is great. I hope it stays under $2. Um, it's just a value machine in this deck. If they kill it, I get a bunch of cards. If they don't kill it, I'm beating face with it. Um, so they have to exile it for me to not get value. Um, there's a lot of cards that don't cost X, but they have X in the casting cost. And Roshin don't care. She can uh, she can pay any cost that contains X. So um, at first glance, you might not realize that, but Hydra Broodmaster and Pelucranos and effects like this, uh, you can you can just dump mana into them. Um, tons of mana sinks in this deck because I really need to get value out of each one of my cards since I'm uh, green red. Uh, I have made 10 10 tens with this before at instant speed, and it felt pretty good. This deck is just all about having fun and going big. Uh, Steel Hellkite. Uh, every time I'm about to cut this card, I just get like insane value out of it. Uh, yesterday I had haste, and I had to tap out to cast it and give it haste, but I had Roshin untapped, so after I hit my opponent, I tapped her for 4x, and I blew up like their uh, Biden of Thassa and a creature, uh, and just totally wrecked them. Uh, you're going to need some evasion. Uh, sometimes you don't have trample, and Rogue's Passage is just a nice way to get there. Kessig Wolf Run is one of the ultimate finishers, and once again, it has that X cost. There's just so much, uh, so many cards that I've found that uh, let me get value out of Roshin. Um, this is a bad card. Do not play this card, <laughs> but it, uh, it gets there. It has trample, it has haste. Um, it's just really funny. It's, it's what you need to get there sometimes, uh, when you need those effects and it's one more way to get it. Uh, this is also sort of a bad card, but when you have so much mana and you just need a way to get there, you can give your biggest thing double strike and make them block your other thing and just smash face. Triumph of the Hordes is pr a pretty obvious finisher. This card's becoming a little bit cliche in 2DH, but uh, you really can't say no to it, especially when um, I'm going to be able to make some tokens, and I just need Trample and need to need to kill the control player before they untap and, and have their removal spell. Uh, Fires of Yavimaya makes sense. You're, you're getting haste. You got Ogre Battle Driver. Uh, not only gives haste, but pumps your guys. This is great when you're making a whole bunch of little guys. Surak the Hunt Caller, a recent addition. Um, just a value, 5-4 uh, four for 4, can also smash pretty well and gives haste to something, maybe himself, maybe Roshin. Um, one really cute thing you can do with Roshin is uh, cast her, and when she has haste, you can immediately tap her, so it ends up being sort of free if you have an X spell. Uh, Moss War Bridge is great just to cheat things into play. It's really not hard to get to 10 power in this deck. One Malignus will do it. Um, Again, just smashing with value creatures now. That's what this stack of cards is all about. All these cards can end the game, take over the game. Giant Adifidge, just getting there, making more guys. Uh, Inferno Titan, just a value machine, gets blockers out of the way. Charmbreaker Devils. Uh, if you've never uh, recurred to Boundless Realms with Charmbreaker Devils, you just have not timid yet. Uh, <laughs> this card's also just a great beater. He can be a 12-4 pretty easily on your turn. He can get back burn spells to uh, to close out the game. Uh, Deus of Calamity, he's a really efficient trampling beater. I don't really uh, like land destruction, but when it's incidental like this, it's fine. Uh, no big deal. Uh, Rampaging Baloths. So uh, whenever you cast a ramp spell, you're just getting massive value out of this guy. And you're really living the dream when you've got the Ogre Battle Driver in play and you cast Boundless Realms. And now you have like 11 six fours just swinging and finishing games. Um, a lot of this deck is going to sound like Magical Christmas Land, but when all I'm doing is trying to get to Magical Christmas Land, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in maybe half the games. Someone's going to have an answer a lot of the time, like Aether Eyes or whatever. Uh, but when they don't, you're just you just get to stand up in the game store, yell Timmy, do a lap, high five people. It's super fun deck to play with. Uh, Hornet Queen, another value creature, makes tokens, hard to deal with. It just keeps uh, keeps hitting people in the air. 
Uh, also good against like Voltron. I mean, this deck doesn't do a lot of control. Um, these are a couple of the control effects in the deck. Uh, stealing people's stuff. I, I only have, I think, one or two sack outlets, uh, but this can also just finish the game, uh, get blockers out of the way or, or whatever you need to do. Um, it is pretty fun to steal someone's guy and then cast Life's Legacy, sacrifice it, and draw a bunch of cards off it. Um, pretty feel-bad moment for your opponent there. Tyrant's Familiar is another just value machine. This came out in Commander, and the first time this card was cast against me, it just completely wrecked me, and I'm like, yes, I would like one of those, thank you. Um, getting rid of their blocker, their general, whatever they have, and then smashing them for seven is just so brutal. Um, I run uh, Rex Sage as kind of like my only uh, enchantment removal. Uh, I, I used to run more, but I just realized... Sometimes you just want to do a thing like uh, some decks are designed to win games and grind out victories and like uh, have utility and this deck is just designed to just smash face, uh, burn people out and just get there. So the hell with the whole breaches and the decimates and all that. Uh, I just want to clan defiance you for 30 and, and then reverberate it and clan defiance the other guy for 30. Like that's that's what's really fun about this deck. So it uh, takes out a flyer and a creature. Uh, Devil's Play. Uh, the, just the card advantage you need in this deck, being able to flash it back later after people have forgotten about it, it's just so beautiful. I love this card. Uh, Crater's Claws, uh, I ran it because it's just, uh, you know, that extra two damage can be relevant, especially when you're copying it or whatever. Banefire, a uh, really sweet card, can't be countered, can't be prevented. Um, really nice way to finish off that control player that you've you've only hit for 12 or 15 damage early in the game, um, but now you're like... Uh, 25 mana lol get you for exaxes sudden demise pretty sweet uh oftentimes can be a one-sided board wipe uh, that you need to uh just completely wreck the reanimator guy or the token guy or the voltron guy um gets around hex proof um, really sweet card uh, and then you smash with all your creatures comet storm is so powerful i mean i know you don't want to open it in your modern masters uh draft but uh for value, but it's it gets value in the game. I mean, you are just kicking it, uh, kicking it hardcore, and and burning three people and a creature. Remember, I've got like twenty mana, like all the time in this deck. So all of these cards are just super powerful. Um, and the nice thing about these burn spells too is, in the early game, if you know you just have to get rid of something before it goes off, uh, like the Narset type creatures, you can just burn everything for two, you know, and, and totally slow down the guy who's running an elf deck or, or whatever it is. So this deck does have quite a bit of utility, even though it looks like it's all about the late game. Molten Disaster, another way to finish the, uh, the blue player. They can't, uh, counter it because it has split second. Um, Impact Resonance. This is, uh, just, this is a really great little utility card. So, in the early game, you can bash somebody for six, and they're like, well, I don't want to block with my guy, because I need my guy, so they take six, and then you're like, impact resonance, hit your guy, hit somebody else's guy, uh, and then in the late game, you're just copying a clan defiance, it's like another reverberate in your deck, and having the instant speed um, is just really uh, an insane an insane effect for two mana. This, this is a sweet card, you should try it out in your deck um, and see if you get value out of it. Speaking of value, all of these burn spells can instead give you a ton of three ones. Just a ton. So burn you for 15, instead of you taking damage, I get 15 three ones. Uh, if I have an Ogre Battle Driver in play, uh, I mean, these guys stick around too. Like, these are not sacrificed. Uh, so you just get a ton of tokens, and here's a couple other ways to make tokens. Um, this is token and group hug. I love this card when I'm playing against uh, especially a blue player, or even if like someone's just way ahead in the game, uh, or someone's like, uh, they're playing like sack outlets or something, and it's really funny to just give them nothing, uh, and give the guy that's losing everything. Um, or you can split it up if things are even. Either way, you're getting a ton of creatures in play. You're making use of your mana. This this deck's all about having mana sinks and uh, and cute things to do. Tempt with vengeance. Uh, do not accept this offer. <laughs> you will regret it. Just let me have my one ones. Let me swing at somebody for twelve or whatever. Um, but again, occasionally there's that blue player who's got control. And uh, and your your buddy who's also behind with you, they're gonna say yes 
we're going to get lots of little hasty guys, and we're going to beat face with them. Uh, Goblin Offensive, uh, best flavor text in the deck. Pretty pretty sweet card. Uh, it's a little underpowered in the early game, um, but I just wanted to have one more token generator, and this really just gets the job done. Uh, it goes great with Goblin Bombardment. Um, incidental damage is just sometimes what you need to close out the game. Uh, having a one sack outlet in your deck is great. Uh, also versus control magic, uh, it gets me value out of like the lifeblood Hydra. Um, just a, just a nice card to have. Uh, one of my favorite games ever, I Sylvan offering, uh, one of my friends who had a goblin bombardment. And then I also had a goblin bombardment and <laughs> The blue player was at like 19 life and we just, uh, we were messing with him a little bit. He's a good friend of ours and we just took turns, uh, sacking one goblin at a time and taking his life total down and then like in response sacking another one. And okay, I'm going off into a tangent, but, uh, you just got to understand this deck creates fun stories. Uh, it's all about just teaming out and doing something funny. Um, nothing feels as good as just burning someone for 29 for exactsies. It's just great. Uh, Gelatinous Genesis is probably the best card in the deck. Uh, remember, we're shooting for 9 mana on turn 4 or 5. That equates to 16 power. Uh, and by the way, I'm untapping Roshin on my next turn. So you better have a, an answer, a board wipe, uh, uh, something that can just get rid of all these tokens right away, or you are going to get uh, just beat down mercilessly. I think the most I've put into this was like 25 mana or something. I made 12, 12, 12s. A uh, pretty sweet card. Um, all of these effects uh, are especially good with this last card, one of the signature cards of the deck to tell you about. War Storm Surge gives you all that incidental damage. You don't even have to swing with the creatures. You just make them big and burn somebody out. You can burn creatures if you need to. Um, this card's just insane value in this deck. So that is my Timmy deck. Uh, I'm mostly a spike or a Johnny, but occasionally you just got to Timmy out. Um, I also really love this deck when a new player is around. It's my Ferris deck, uh, and I usually run this to just kind of show off the, the fun element of the format. Um, when you hallow the horde and, and burn people out for 28, they can't even be mad. You know, like, you got there. It was sweet. You had fun. Uh, if you're interested in 2DH and or have any questions, uh, please check out the link below. I've got the full deck list, and we have a link to our Facebook group. Uh, even if you're not in Seattle, we'd love you to join and just kind of see what we're up to. We got lots of metagame information and deck lists, and uh, we're trying to do more of these deck techs. So come check us out. Thank you guys for watching. Have a